Welcome to EECS 1021, Object-Oriented Programming from Sensors to Actuators. This is the first class and the introductory presentation. My name is James Andrew Smith. I'm a professional engineer. Um, I'll be announcing office hours later on and contact information is available from the E-Class page. If you want to find out more information about me, you can find it on the blog right there. But just for, very quickly to summarize, I'm an associate professor in teaching here at York University. I have uh, bachelor's and master's degrees in electrical engineering from the University of Alberta. I have a PhD in mechanical engineering from McGill University. I've taught and done a postdoc in Germany and taught in France as well. Um, I was formerly at TMU where I was uh, involved in the biomedical engineering program and I've been at York since 2015. This course has been designed by a number of different people. You can see a list of many of those people right here on the, on the page. I'd like to thank all these people because uh, uh, they have done an amazing job in getting this course set up and uh, updated over the years, both in terms of staff behind the scenes work and uh, front and center in the classroom with the teaching faculty. The course is one on object-oriented programming and we use Java and Arduinos in this course in order to do things that are related to engineering and edu engineering education in a variety of different domains. The course is designed to introduce you, the student, to computational thinking. It's uh, deeply immersed in problem-based pedagogy, and we try to expose you to underlying concepts and experiential labs and projects and the implementations behind them. The programming language that was chosen for this course, Java, is used in a wide variety of applications. It's object-oriented, it's a modern programming language, it has um, applications in industry, and it's one that that is very popular uh, in the engineering and computer science communities. The problems that we chose here um, were designed to expose uh, abstract programming concepts to you and to immerse you in uh, relevant and engaging applications. And you'll see that um, especially in things like the projects that we work on. The experiential lab is based on sensors and actuators, so external devices that we connect up to the computer. Um, and the problems that we are using in this class were designed um, and chosen based on consultations with other members of the engineering faculty here at York University to make sure that we have a, a wide variety of perspectives on uh, how programming is used in uh, multiple disciplines. So why should you care about object-oriented anything or sensors and actuators as an engineering student? Well, it's important to point out that 1021 and the 1011 course that preceded it are foundational courses uh, intentionally. We uh, expose you to design tools. We design you to uh, concepts that are interdisciplinary on purpose because so much of engineering work these days is interdisciplinary. And as such, we want to make sure that you get a good exposure to computational thinking and programming over the full first year. Object-oriented programming is something that even if you don't understand it directly uh, and explicitly, it's used all the time in all sorts of computer programs and it's what makes modern computer work work. Um, in broader engineering uh, design, it's something that's seen in all sorts of design paradigms and it's encap it, it's basically uh, uh, the way that we look at encapsulating independent components within all sorts of different engineering projects and engineering designs. We want to ensure that you are exposed to uh, testing regimes and, and testing uh, applications and object-oriented programming lends itself very well to testing implementations. It also scales up very well. And so that's one of the uh, multiple reasons why we use object-oriented programming in this course. It's important to point out that uh, the concepts that you learn about in this class are applicable to basically every branch of engineering, because in every branch of engineering, there is uh, lots of usage of microprocessors, sensors, actuators, uh, programming in multiple languages, as well as things like instrumentation. All right, so let's move on to the, the specifics of, of the course itself, and we'll look at the course learning outcomes. So the very first one is demonstrating an ability to test and debug a given program and to reason about its correctness. So it's important that by the end of this semester, you are able to do that, to test and debug and to reason about the correctness of a program. 
by the end of the semester, students are expected to be able to uh, take a problem specification and a suitable uh, application programming interface and build an application, a program, that meets the given requirement. It's important that by the end of the semester you can use uh, things that are called ready-made collections or just collections to solve problems involving aggregations of typed data and we'll talk about that later on in the course. By the end of the semester you'll be able to build an event-driven application that controls sensors and actuators in order to connect uh, act events, activities that are going on in the outside world to physical actions, okay, to basically to close that loop. And you'll be expected to be able to program common applications from a variety of engineering disciplines and solve them using a computer. In terms of the schedule, all the times are with respect to Toronto and Canada. Office hours will be determined later on. Class time is based on your personal schedule, how you've registered in the course. There are three sections of the course. There are about 500 of you and you're, you're split up between three different sections. Each section meets with me uh, in class twice a week for 50 minutes at a time. Those in-class sessions uh, will be sometimes just regular question and answer sessions or uh, inform information informative sessions. And in other cases, they will be required uh, flip class sessions where we do uh, homework in class. The flip class sessions will be linked to material from the previous week uh, in terms of the pre-recorded material that are generally asynchronous intera and interactive. The lab times are set as well in your schedule and uh, they are typically uh, in the evenings uh, once a week uh, depending on your particular uh, registration. We will be offering for most sessions the options of either doing in-person demos, over Zoom demos, or recorded demonstrations that are due at the end of the week. There will be some sessions where you'll be required to come into the lab to demonstrate and to discuss issues with the TA in person as well. Please make sure that you check your official schedule. There'll be more details about this at a later date. Now, the course website is uh, at eclass.yorku.ca. Please make sure that you can see the EECS 1021 course page option. In the event that eClass goes down, I will make sure that I send out announcements uh, on Twitter and by email if email is still up. A lot of the material is available uh, for this course through asynchronous videos that are uh, hosted on YouTube. You'll be able to access them through eClass where we have um, asynchronous uh, questions uh, attached to those videos, but you can also watch the YouTube videos uh, raw without the questions overlaid on top. In terms of assessment, you will be assessed in a very similar way to how we did it for EECS 1011. There won't be any tests. 80% of your grade is based on homework, which is both the asynchronous and flipped classes. Uh, the readings and video, mostly video. Um, the homework is worth 20% and the videos themselves with the, the readings are 20% as well. You'll have a main project, which is worth 20%, and you have your lab demos, activities, and reports that are worth that final 20% of the 80% majority part of the, the coursework. There is a bonus project that is worth 20% uh, that uh, allows students, if they engage with it, up to an A or an A+. Otherwise, if you just complete the 80%, that first 80%, you can get up to a B+. Very similar to how we did it, effectively the same as how we did it in 1011. In terms of timing, flip classes will be done once a week. Uh, otherwise, you've got the asynchronous videos, uh, readings, and interactive activities. Your lab components are done once per week, and you either have to demo or produce um, PDF lab reports, or both, depending on the particular lab. So make sure that you read the lab material ahead of time. There are pre-lab components to these uh, labs as well, which are due on the Sunday before the lab itself. So make sure that you take care of uh, reviewing your schedule and the material that's on eClass to make sure you don't miss any of the labs or the pre-labs. You have main projects that will be uh, done using Java and Arduinos, and uh, there's a bonus project at the end. And again, those projects use Java and Arduino uh, to accomplish the design work. You will be working as well, doing activities instead of with MATLAB Grader, which is what we did in 1011, you'll be doing virtual programming lab. Uh, for this course. It's similar, it's a little bit more difficult to use, um, but you'll get used to it. And it's available directly in the eClass page. 
There's a reference textbook. It's not required, but it is, uh, or you don't have to buy it. It's available for free um, through the library, and so you can access it whenever uh, you need it. And I will refer to it once in a while throughout the semester, telling you about specific chapters that might be interesting or important to understand or to read through. The labs are going to use uh, Java initially without hardware, and then later on you will be using uh, the Arduino boards that you have already from the 1011 class, as well as Java. There will be T TA support uh, within the labs uh, in person, as well as over Zoom, and some labs will require in-person attendance. Typically, there will be two labs, uh, sorry, there will be two TAs per lab session uh, to make sure that you get uh, sufficient support. And it's important that you don't switch between lab sessions. So if your lab is on Tuesday, it's scheduled officially on Tuesday, that's the lab you have to go to. Uh, from there, um, you can change lab sections if you do it through the official registration process. I don't manually change students from one lab session or lab section to another. That's up to you to do with the registrar's office. The labs are going to use specialized hardware for sensing control of simple electronic and mechanical devices. You'll be expected to use your laptops as well as Java that you will install on your laptops. Uh, and later on in the semester, we'll introduce how to connect that to the Arduino hardware. Some labs, again, will have required in-person components to them for verification and guidance. Uh, and make sure that you don't skip the pre-lab work. Make sure that um, if, for instance, you're doing the lab for uh, the material in module two, there'll be a pre-lab session or a section in module one. So make sure that you're always checking out for the pre-lab components and the due date and time for the pre-lab component is the Sunday uh, before the lab itself at 11.55 p.m. Lab reports are, if they're part of the lab material, are due on the Sunday after your lab, again at 11.55 p.m. on eClass. The programming environment that we use uh, is uh, Java uh, and the Java IDE uh, called IntelliJ. There are other uh, IDEs as well. Eclipse, for instance, is one. Um, but we'll be focusing on IntelliJ because that's what the, the TAs have background with. We'll be using uh, IntelliJ 2023 and the Java 21 SDK. There are videos to show you how to do that uh, on eClass. We will sometimes be, or actually there will be sometimes, uh, external libraries that you'll have to download via uh, a system called Maven and we will occasionally be using the Java shell either within IntelliJ or outside of it for quick verification and exploration. The labs will require the use directly of the Arduino IDE in order to download something called Fermata onto the board. Uh, more explicit uh, use of this Arduino board and IDE is done in this class than was done in the 1011 class. Um, from there you need to make sure that you have a computer that can handle uh, Java as well as the Arduino board. In the first week of the class, there won't be an official lab, so the TAs won't be in the lab sessions. You're expected to do the labs on your own as homework, and you're expected to uh, install IntelliJ and the Java JDK using the instructions that are on eClass. So why are we using Java in this course? Well, Java itself is a mature and stable language. It's feature rich, it's multi-platform. Programs like MATLAB are partly written in Java um, for these reasons. And it even has a Java API that you can access. Uh, Java itself is popular, it's a balanced language. It's one of the top five programming languages in the world. It uh, uses an object-oriented programming paradigm, which is important for a lot of engineering work, which makes it flexible and powerful. It's similar to MATLAB, because both are rooted in another programming language called C. And so transitioning to Java is relatively straightforward when you come from a background like uh, that in MATLAB. And unlike MATLAB, when you exit the university, it's a free uh, language to use. So you can use it in um, uh, regular work and hobby work as well. The next question is, why are we using IntelliJ to program in Java? We could use uh, other uh, IDEs like Eclipse. Well, uh, IntelliJ is being used actually because of student suggestions in the past. Uh, it provides a best-in-class modern interface. It has great tools inside. It's a, like Java itself, is stable and powerful. It does fantastic work of checking your syntax. It provides suggestions. It's very helpful. 
and it has built-in support for downloading libraries through Maven, which is fantastic as well. Why are we using Arduinos? Well, Arduinos are used in effectively all engineering disciplines. So it's really important that you get experience with it. Uh, they're really good for doing data acquisition, uh, for mechatronic control. They're reliable, they're easy, and they're cheap, 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 cheap. You can get them online, you can get them in person, in stores here in Toronto. And, and basically, they're relatively straightforward to, to connect to programming languages like Java. So that's one of the reasons why we use Arduinos. Um, they're easy, they're straightforward, they're inexpensive, they're replaceable, um, and students are using them all the time. So it's a really good set of hardware to use as well in this course. And that summarizes the intro to the 1021 programming class. Mm -hmm.